Hi, I'm Nick O'Leary from the Node Red project, here with the release notes for the 1.1 release. The information sidebar now includes a tree view of your flows. We call it the outliner. This gives you another way to navigate your flows quickly and to find things. When you hover over Node, you get a button that takes you to it in the workspace, a button to enable and disable it, and in the case of inject and debug nodes, a button to trigger their actions. Double clicking on the node will bring up its edit dialog. To make room for the outliner, the help section of the sidebar has now moved to its own sidebar tab. This tab lets you browse all of the available help topics without having to select a node of the right type in the workspace first. It also gives us a space to add other help topics in the editor in the future. To help organize your flows, you can now create groups of nodes. Once grouped, they can be moved or copied as a single object within the editor. Groups can be given a border and background color, as well as an optional label. The Node Red admin command line tool has existed since the start of the project, but it isn't something widely known about or used. It can be used to remotely administer a Node Red runtime. To make it more useful, it's now integrated into the main Node Red command itself, and you run it like this. One of the useful commands it provides is a way to hash passwords suitable for the admin auth setting. It prompts you for the password you want to use, and it gives you back the hash you can paste straight into your settings file. The other commands let you list what nodes are installed into the runtime, enable and disable them from the palette, install new ones and remove old ones, and you can also search the flow library. The node red command now supports the minus D option to override individual settings. For example, to temporarily run with a different level of logging, you can use node red minus D logging.console.level equals trace. There are new options for adding custom HTTP middleware in front of the editor and admin routes, options for custom authentication token handling in the admin API, and the ability to automatically refresh the HTTPS certificates used by the editor. In the nodes, we've added built-in support for the moment library in JSON utterance expressions. This provides an incredibly rich set of date and time handling functions that are time zone aware. We're also considering how to expose them in the function node for a later release. The inject node can now set any properties on the message it sends. You aren't limited to just the topic and payload. The function node now lets you provide code that should be run when the node is deployed and when it's being stopped. This lets you initialize any state in the node before it starts handling messages. The main function block has also been made a proper async function, so you can now use the await keyword at the top level. The debug node can now set its status message independently of what it passes to the debug sidebar. That's useful if you want the debug to show a shorter summary status whilst showing a more complete information in the sidebar where there's more space. The trigger node can now optionally send its second message onto a separate output. You can also customize what properties the node uses to identify different streams of messages. You're no longer tied to using just message.topic. Thanks to everyone who's contributed to this release, both in code, testing the beta releases and providing feedback along the way. And please do share your feedback on the forum and let us know what you think about Node-RED.